Greetings everyone! I want to make a follow-up video to the last video about the long-tailed pair circuit where we're talking about improving its common mode rejection by adding a constant current source into the tail section of the amplifier. Now I was looking at the circuit and I said, hmm, in common mode, which if you recall, that's when you put the exact same signal on both inputs and you get nothing out because it's a differential amplifier it only amplifies the differences in the signal but when that's occurring and you're careful to match the transistors and match all the resistor values and you're again using a constant current source these circuits actually become independent so what should happen if I take for example, this side of the circuit out and it just becomes a single transistor amplifier, we still should not get any signal from this output. Because when it is a differential pair here, we have both transistors in the circuit, signals are exactly balanced. In that case, we can ignore one of the sides. So what I want to do is take this side of the circuit out. But I'll have to do one more thing because the constant current source is programmed to handle two sides. I have to reprogram it for half the current because there's only one side in there. So I'll do that, reprogram it, take this side out, and I'll put the signal in and we'll see what happens here. Okay, so here's the modified circuit. I unplug this transistor, parked it over here. So now we just have a single transistor with a little bit more going on in the emitter circuit, of course. Reprogram the constant current source since we only have half the load now. If I didn't do that, that would throw off my bias set points here. So then I'll connect up the signals and we'll do some probing with the scope. Now if you follow my channel, about a month or so ago, I did a video about how to set up a common emitter amplifier with voltage divider bias. And the gain of that circuit is roughly the collector resistance divided by the emitter resistance. Well, if you look at the differential amplifier circuit here, the common mode gain is really that same formula. It's just that we have you know, a little bit more going on in the emitter circuit. So it's the collector resistance divided by two times the tail resistor value plus the emitter resistor here for using one. So when I take away one side of the circuit, this now becomes the gain equation. So here's the simplified circuit. Took away the other side of the amplifier. So the gain of the circuit you know, it's not common mode anymore. It's not a differential amplifier now. So it's RC over RE. And in the case when we have the resistor switched in, it's RE plus RT. And we'll see that momentarily. Now when you have a constant current source in, recall that this has a very high impedance. In theory, it's infinite. And when you have a very high value in the denominator, it's going to make this value, the gain, very small. Okay, so enough yakety yak. Let me get you pointed to the scope and we'll probe around the amplifier. Okay, so now I have the resistor switched in. I'm not using the constant current source yet. This is a signal going in to the amplifier. In other words, the signal on the base. If you look at the value there, it's about 251. So let's see what we get on the collector, or in other words, the output. And as you see, it has dropped. It's 237. Why is that happening? Well, if you remember our simplified equation, if I would grab the correct paper, simplified gain equation. Well, we have 4.7K here, but we have 4.7K plus 220. 
So our denominator is larger, slightly larger than the numerator. So this value is going to be less than 1, a little bit less than 1. So that's why we're seeing less than unity gain. So now this is where it gets interesting. Let me switch in the constant current source and I'll take some measurements. Okay, so constant current source is switched in. We're looking at the base again. So this is the signal. It's going to be the same. So let's check the signal on the collector. Whoa, our signal's gone. What happened to our signal? Well, let's probe the emitter of the transistor. Well, wait a minute, that's the exact same amount of signal that's on the base. Let's probe on the other side of that 220 ohm emitter resistor. Or in other words, right where the constant current source is. Again, the same signal. What is going on here? Well, if you look at our simplified gain equation, we have the very high impedance of a constant current source in the denominator, and that's going to make the value of gain very small. So what's actually happening here, we're trying to put a signal into the base, and as you recall, that signal current flows through the base into the emitter section of the amplifier. But we have this constant current source that's trying to keep this current the same. So we really have no load to conduct our signal current. So we end up with the same exact voltage and no current flowing through our base to emitter circuit. Therefore, there's nothing for the transistor to amplify. There's no signal there. Now in actuality, you know, this is not infinite impedance. It's not a perfect constant current source. And there would be a very small signal there. But for all intents and purposes, we weren't getting a signal out from our collector. Well, I thought that was interesting, splitting the differential pair in half and seeing that same effect by having that constant current source in the emitter circuit. Well, I'm kind of nerdy, and I thought, yeah, that's kind of neat how that works. Hopefully you thought it was interesting as well. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching and your support. See you next time.